Uh, we were up to Jada. Yep. yep. Thanks. Uh, um, you said to me at the last assistant group um, that I had a highly developed will for seeking pleasure. Yep. Which, which I understood as. Um, well, and as my you understand better of, what I'm my saying now. My definition of pleasure, not obviously not God's definition. Yeah, but, um, exactly. Um, so my version of pleasure at the moment is avoiding pain. Uh, not just that. Your version of pleasure is getting your addictions met. That's okay. your version of pleasure. Yep. Yep. So it's not just avoiding pain. Just it's me. seeking out what you believe to be pleasurable things just in order to get your addictions met. Because, because the way you see it is your addictions bring you pleasure. Yeah. Satisfying them brings you pleasure. Yeah. Yep. And so the only way to overcome that is to um, use my will to feel the pain? No, no. Like at some point you've got to see, is it really pleasure that you're getting? Like, is it really? Like at some, you've got to get to the truth at some point, right? Yeah. Are you, re do you really have such a life of pleasure like, like, can you see yourself being 80 years old, just for a moment, and yeah. you're living exactly as you're living now, but you no longer have mummy? Imagine what your life is going to be. So you're not with a woman, you're not, you're not with a partner, you're living alone, mm -hmm. mummy's not cooking or cleaning or doing the washing and ironing or whatever else for you, mm -hmm. right? You're living completely alone, there's no emotional addictions you can get met from her anymore. Mm -hmm. There's no woman in a right mind who wants to live with you, right? Because you because you generally treat women badly, sexually and otherwise. Mm -hmm. So there's no woman in a right mind living with you, and and do you think that's going to be a happy life? No, no. So if that's where it's headed, mm -hmm. then then what's going to cause you to be motivated to actually develop an aspiration to change. You, you remember um, some time ago, I don't know if you've actually heard this channeling, Jada, but I gave, there was, Mary and I did a channeling with a guy who actually comes to the groups and influences many of you to sin. You remember Anthony. him? Anthony, yeah. yeah yep. Remember that? Yep. And remember, in order to get him to pause, I had to actually take him ask some of our spirit friends to take him to the hells where a guy who had done what he's doing had done it for many years and what he ended up like. You remember? Mm -hmm. And remember what the guy had ended up like? He'd gone bonkers, right? Like, yeah. like, like had, had, had diseased, basically, of the mind in the spirit world, just roaming around. You know, he, he was just going around in circles, muttering to himself. He couldn't do anything else. That's all he was doing. And he'd been doing that for years and years and years, right? That, that was the result of Anthony's future. That's the future result of Anthony's current behaviour. You follow me? Mm -hmm. And what did that do for Anthony? You remember? You remember it made him sort of like... Before then he was very argumentative, wasn't he? He wanted to attack me, wanted to abuse me a bit. Yep. He wanted to laugh at all of you guys who were easily influenced and everything. And he felt he was doing the right thing. You wanted it. He wanted it. It was all good. Right? So he didn't really see any sin in anything he was doing, did he? Would, would, actually, would I have been one of the people? Sorry? Would I have been one of the people that he influenced? Cause I, of did, course, Shadow, yeah. 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 Yep. Which is the reason why I bring up the issue. Mm -hmm. But, but, but the, the reality is he, he couldn't see anything he was doing as being wrong because he was meeting your addictions. Right? He's meeting your addiction, so he feels everything's good, everything's good for you, everything's good for both of us. But when I took him to see the true results of where he was headed, mm -hmm. what happened then? I actually can't remember. Mm, interesting, yeah. huh? Mm. Anybody else remember? Um, if we just go across to Paul on the other side with the other mic. Yep. Oh, yeah, he was pretty shocked. And he it just was. thought, oh, I don't want to be like that. I can't keep that up if that's going to happen. Yeah, and it and caused him to pause, didn't it? It caused him to go, whoa, it's like, you're, so you're telling me that that's where I'm going to end up? And I said, yep. <laughs> and, and he's going, oh, okay. So now, now he's going, okay, there's a future event there that I don't know if I want that future event. 
So what am I going to do now to change my way of life, my path, if you like? Right? And this is what I'm suggesting to you, Jada. You need to examine not just the, the instant pleasure that you receive by getting your addictions met, but you need to examine the future long-term course if you keep doing the same thing and where it's going to end up. Right? You need to allow yourself to truthfully examine that because it's quite easy to see where it's going to end up. Mm -hmm. and, and it could end up in a lot more serious places than you even think. You could end up with sort of very severe venereal diseases. You could end up with all sorts of problems that could actually threaten your life if you continue on the current course of action. You follow? Yeah. So, so, so you're just measuring the instant gratification of meeting the addiction without considering see see a person who's sane considers also the long-term effects of some, of the behavior not just the instant gratification portion of the behavior you follow me yep now if you're truly sane this is what you'll do you'll consider the long-term effects of a course of action and then you'll ask yourself well do i want the outcome or do i want the results of that long-term effect and if you're really wise you would you would you would relook at your current behavior seeing that that would be the outcome in the long term you follow me mm -hmm. so what i'm suggesting with pleasure versus pain is is because of the instant gratification issue we forget to measure uh over time you know so that if that's a graph of time and this is a graph of years well, what am I going to end up one with two years, three years, four years, five years, six years, you know, right up to sort of near the end of my life? What am I going to end up with if I consider, if I can continue to do the same thing? You're going to get to a stage where your body isn't attractive anymore. So no woman in her right mind will want to sleep with you, mm -hmm. right? The only way you're going to get sexual gratification then is to go more to prostitutes, mm -hmm. right? in order to get sexual gratification that's the only way you're going to do it and um, because you're probably not going to get much after that right the problem with that is that is that of course that exposes you to all sorts of issues besides it being numbing emotionally and and terrible for your personal happiness and also harming those particular women in the process or contributing to their harm uh, it's also causing a lot of further damage to yourself and your soul and you're also not considering this part of your life the big d <laughs> death mm -hmm. and what's going to happen after the big d where you're going to end up because if you were considered that you definitely wouldn't engage your current behavior at all so what i would do there is i'd look at people you know try to find out from people in the spirit world who have actually engaged in, and they're in this kind of behavior unfortunately not many of them are capable of speaking to people on earth so it's going to you know take a bit of examination but you you're not you also got to measure that as the potential outcome of your choices and decisions you follow me and what I see is the majority of people do not wish to m analyze all of that and examine whether that is pain or pleasure. Does that make sense? They're only willing to examine the particular moment in time that they've got an offer of getting an addiction met. That's all they're examining. Right? The problem with only examining a moment in time is that you're not accurately examining anything really. And to accurately examine everything, you're going to have to examine the lives of other people who have passed, who, who have passed with this particular issue on earth. Uh, you're also going to have to have a good forward look into your future and ask yourself, you know, imagine yourself being 80 years of age or something and, and living this life. Is that going to be able to be like, is that ever going to happen? even you need to examine these particular questions if you're truly going to be honest with yourself about the current results you follow what i'm saying yeah yeah yep. and this is what you're refusing to do because yeah. your only focus is on the instant gratification of meeting an addiction does that make sense yeah and as a result of that you're not analyzing anything over a longer period of time what the long-term effects are the long-term effects on your soul are the long-term effects on other people's soul the the long-term effects on your body you're going to be and so forth you're not examining any of these issues okay yep thank you
Yep. So this is what requires, like, uh, my feelings, more honest self-examination as to the long-term effects of this course of behaviour is the way to go. Yep. And then notwithstanding the fact that when you meet your soulmate, who is a woman, right? Your soulmate's a woman? Yeah, I'm assuming so. That's my well, attraction. Well, that's your attraction, isn't it? So, so when you meet her mm -hmm. and she finds out about all of these things you've done, mm -hmm. how is she going to also feel about these things? And also, once she's sensitive emotionally, how is she even going to feel during this period of time? So at the moment, complete rejection from you. You're completely rejecting your soulmate. Right? So she's going to have to process her way through that also. So there's not only the consequences on your own life, but also the consequences with regard to the other half of your soul and on their life too. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, um, you know, what I see is the majority of people on earth are not honestly examining their, what's really going on. They're just, they're just in the moment of pleasure. It's a, there's a Bible saying for it, it's an epi Epicurean lifestyle. And the Epicureans were people of, of old, you know, in the, in the first century, around about in the, in the, in the first 100 years or so. And they, they had a philosophy of life, which is very similar to today's philosophy. Eat, drink and be merry, for tomorrow we will die or may die. So what they, they were interested in doing was extracting every ounce of so-called instant gratification pleasure out of their life until they died, assuming that their death would be the end of it. So I would also suggest to you that you probably don't have much of an idea or concept about afterlife at this stage, and you certainly aren't considering it in your choices and decisions. Every one of those people who had that concept are still in the hells today. 2,000 years later. So that tells you the seriousness of such decisions. Remember I said that you make a decision, just a little decision to do uh, a sin, you think it's not so bad, but it does engage you to the next sin. And I'm the no, next I'm sin. I'm noticing that a lot. Yeah. And the next sin. And the next sin. And each time you're basically desensitizing your soul to sin. Right? And this is the process you're engaged in. And, and if you keep desensitizing your soul to sin, by the time you stop, if you do stop even, you'll be so far gone that it's going to be very, very hard to recover yourself from sin. You see? So my suggestion is to have a good reflection about where your life's headed and, and ask yourself, is the momentary pleasure worth these long-term painful results because that's where where are you headed long-term painful results yeah, that's big. yeah so the key is to allow yourself to feel about that yep good eye. okay was that a bit heavy for you <laughs> Many, many do this, like many are just considering the short-term momentary satisfaction of an addiction rather than considering the long-term effects of these kind of choices both on yourself and other people around you and then also considering what may ha if there is an afterlife, so you need to at least ask yourself that question, if there is one, where do you think you're going to end up there as well? Uh, so all very important questions to ask oneself. And a person who's truly self-reflective does do that.